Today we are going to make a video of replacing the headlamps or headlight assemblies on our 2005 Toyota Camry. We have these Eagle Eye Auto lamps provided to us uh, by our friends at buyautoparts.com. Thank you to them. <laughs> so we're going to open it up and first take a look and then we'll get to the installation in a little bit. All right, so here's gonna be the passenger side. Nice looking crystal clear lens. It's even got a lamp already in there, bulbs already in there. Looks like everything's ready just to pop it right in. So um, looks like a pretty nice product and uh, We'll find out how well it works and show you how to install it here next. So here is our ghetto, in, uh, what do you call it, redneck ingenuity uh, headlight aiming system. <laughs> we took the box that the headlights came in and uh, we actually tacked it up to some 2x4s to hold it up. So we have something to aim on because, well, basically something's better than nothing. Um, and if you really, if you look at it, I mean, just by eyeballing it, you can get a pretty good idea. We can even tell this car's been in an accident before, and the driver's side headlight looks like it's too far outside. Um, it should be more inward, like probably about there. And then the passenger side one looks like it's pretty much right on. So we're going to just make sure we don't move that, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and swap out the lights and see where we're at. Okay, so first quick thing we can do, well, there was a clip there, but that's missing. Uh, you probably got to pry a plastic clip out of this location in the middle. And then there's also a couple of screws you can take out with a 10 millimeter socket. That's the easy part. Then we'll go uh, to the sides, take the clips out for the fender liner. So then we're going to have to peel back the fender liner to get a screw that's holding the bumper to the fender. So down at the bottom, I'm going to take a couple of screws out that hold it to the engine under cover. See, so now it can come out, but we still got a clip right here. And actually, we probably should take this one as well. Can you see up there? So, there we go. Might as well take that screw out to let the cover come back further and give us more room to work. Sometimes if you do like a two-part process. I don't know why Toyota uses this clip here. <laughs> Honda doesn't. Man, this sucks. Oh, wait. There we go. Oh. See, it's like kind of bent. I don't know, just didn't want to come out. It's supposed to pop back when you twist it, then you pull it out. And then you can unhook, see right there, ooh. Now we got room to get that screw slash bolt right up there. Okay. Make sure all these screws are a little bit different, so. Got one that goes up in the liner there, two that go on the bottom, silver ones. Yours might be different if your car's ever been worked on. And then this one without the big washer was the one that went from the bumper to the fender. And I think that's about it for this section. Uh, oh, somebody jammed it in all crooked. All right, so I took this clip out because I'm just gonna take this whole undercover out because basically we're missing clips along the back and it's just gonna fall down anyways. So this is just a particular little thing that we've run into with this car. You're gonna see that somebody else has worked on your car at some point. Yep, see, fell right down. But now that I took that clip out, we can just push it out of the way. Okay. Then we're going to continue along and get the other screws. And let's see, we'll keep all the under screws together. And then 
There is the ones for the fender liner on the other side. And see, this one still has clips holding it in. So eh, I think we can leave it there. So now that I believe I have all the clips and screws out, should be able to pop the bumper out of its retainers. Oh, there they go. Yeah, there's some retainers in here that hold the bumper, so you kind of got to pop it out. Be careful, though. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Actually, the retainer's pretty small. It's just right up against the fender. There we go. Now we can take out our TTGP Toyota aftermarket bumper. <laughs> so now we have access to our headlight, which um, has a bolt on top, which I can remove with the 10 millimeter socket. All right, and then there's another on the side here. Same size, uses a 10 millimeter socket. So you might be wondering, Oh wow, it's only held in by two bolts, huh? That seems kind of easy or weird, I don't know. But there's actually a retainer underneath and you kind of have, oh, there you go. You kind of have to pull it up and out from that. That's the retainer right there. Kind of weird. It's kind of the first time I've seen that. But, um, and then so we need to unplug all of our lights. Some of them might you more trouble than others but they all have like little squeeze tabs on them right there this one has one right there oh that one's actually just clipped in right there to the um into the housing slides in and out and then you get the low beam right there and then this one just twist and removes right there. So you can see there's two that are linked together, but these are gonna come new on the um, brand new headlight. So uh, we're actually gonna need to discard this. There we go. So yeah, we don't need that. Now we have our new passenger side headlamp assembly. And I'm just going to, um, Plug in the lamps. Make sure they snap into position properly. All right, let's give it a little tug, make sure it's in there. Okay, so yeah, there's, and there's that new little uh, socket and then there's a wire, oh, which actually is supposed to tuck into this little, I don't know, you probably can't see that. But there's like a little, kind of a little track that it clips into. So it doesn't dangle and catch on anything. There we go. And then you do want to note that there's a pin here that goes into a retainer. And then don't forget that retainer at the bottom. So we'll slide it in. So it'll look like it's almost in position. You see this is kind of up because it needs to snap down into that retainer. There we go. All right, so now we just gotta put our bolts on. So on this side one, I'm just kind of centering it holding it, tightening it down. So it's seated nicely into the fender. And same thing on this one, I'm gonna try to center the mount, tighten it down, snapped into the retainer, so that looks good. All right, so we're just gonna repeat the process on this side, taking out the retainer bolts. And then lifting it out of the clip. And then I'm plugging the lights. 
Thankfully on this car, these lights are unplugging really easily. Almost too easy. <laughs> oh, I didn't need to un unclip all that, but you can see this is how the wire is supposed to go. If when you go to put the new one in, see it goes into this little track here and then slides in there. So just make sure it looks like that when you put the new one in. Uh, same process as the other side, nothing crazy. Just got to plug in all the connectors and make sure they snap in. Yeah, I can see sometimes they fall. Uh, see that one? You got a high beam. You got to make sure you get all the way on. It might want to fall off. Ooh, there we go. Had to give it an extra squeeze. There we go. Same on the, the low beam. But now they're good. Everything is firmly in place. So we'll do the same thing. We'll line up the pin. Push it back. And then we got to get it in the retainer. Just make sure I'm pushing it into the retainer. Yep. There's a this piece needs to snap down in there. So if you're not sure, you can just kind of look down below and watch it line up and then you can push it in and we'll put the retaining bolts just kind of hold the headlight back just make sure it seats in there nice and tight let's see back together Make sure. yeah I got my side in oh wait right there it didn't slide into that one mm. so one more thing to note this doesn't matter when you're taking it apart but when you're putting it back together you need to make sure that your bumper cover slides into this retainer there's two sort of clips it doesn't snap in but it needs to line up and slide into that groove otherwise you're going to notice your bumper like doesn't want to go on or it looks crooked and then you can put the little bolts and the missing clip i don't have to talk anymore right <laughs> lining up the screws on the side because the four the two front top screws and the two side screws are the most important on this bumper cover. You just want to barely tighten it with a power tool like that because it's going into plastic. You don't want to strip that out. And then you can line up the fender liner. Oops. Uh, get that back in there. And then you got to slide the clip over the bumper cover and that's where that plastic clip goes in to hold it together so uh, there we go and then we had a screw on the top there it is a couple screws on the bottom sometimes doing stuff in a certain order helps <laughs> I think getting these bottom ones lined up will help hold everything in alignment. There we go. Not too bad. All right. So you're gonna align the undercover. I, I realize I have to go back and put the undercover on the other side. <laughs> Cause you have to align the bolt, the undercover and the grommet. There we go. So you tuck the liner inside the bumper cover. Oh, actually, don't forget this one. Do that first. See, I should have done this one first. Bad example. <laughs> I did it first on the other side, but then I got distracted. 
Okay. So now we'll push the liner in. And this is where it's supposed to line up with this clip right here. Except our liner is kind of ripped. <laughs> oh, yeah. Plastic clip. Uh, once again, we're off on this. But sometimes. Oh, there we go. Just gotta make sure everything's seated right. There we go. Usually if something doesn't line up and it was good the first time, it's because something's not seated properly somewhere. Should be about right. Yeah, the fun part about these two screws is you're aligning the the bumper, the fender liner, and the undercover, and the frame all at the same time. All right. Then we gotta just put all the other little retainer screws in. I do need to get a ratchet. Yeah, but it's the holes aren't, they're offset, they're not lining up. Oh, that's a good idea. Once I did that, I pushed it at a better angle. Oh, but then it doesn't want to snap in. <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. Just tighten these by hand. Just make sure that these covers are tucked under the bumper. You don't want them well, I should say above the bumper. You don't want them hanging down underneath so it'll catch on something and get ripped out. And then in the middle, the two covers overlap. And then we've got a couple more screws. Oh, gotta make sure that's tucked in. So the adjuster screw on the driver's side is a little trickier because there's a fuse box and the battery is right there next to it. But you can reach down, maybe if you have a small little eight millimeter um, ratcheting wrench, you can use it and just turn it around. If you want to go up, you go counterclockwise. If you want to aim the light further down, you go clockwise. So here is the nice and easy to access passenger side adjusting um, screw and that one is um, same thing um, it doesn't matter side to side you're still turning it counterclockwise to move the beam up and clockwise to move the beam down I think it's moving is it moving Slowly. What do you think? I think it's about maybe still a little lower. Up a little more. Yeah, let's go up a little more. Oh, <laughs> fail, we're done. All right, so that about does it. Um, we're just wrapping up uh, the install of our new headlamps from our friends at buyautoparts.com. They look great, nice and crystal clear. Um, they fit well. This actually was one of our fastest headlight installs so far. It probably was the best and fastest. So um, 
Yeah, I guess any other questions, just leave a comment.